sculptures of the East and the West, and the region is littered with many Buddhist caves with murals, Buddhist temples, and many other ruins that bear witness to the long history. On the road between Kucha City and the Great Canyon, you'll find the Kutzer Gaha Beacon Tower. Built during the West Han Dynasty, it's more than 2,000 years old. Standing 13 meters high with a base parameter of over 20 meters, it's one of the best preserved of its kind in Xinjiang. Somehow, this ancient beacon tower reminds me of Wang Lobin. It passed on military message in ancient times, and Wang Lobin passed on music heritage. He's the one who allowed the rest of the country get to know those wonderful, wonderful music in northwestern China. His mission accomplished, his legacy remains. The Taklamagan Desert, the biggest desert in China. We made a little detour into it before arriving at Korla, which is some five hours drive east of Kucha. The desert landscape is dramatic, but after a while, it becomes mesmerizing. The desert can change its nature at very short notice. You can be in this golden landscape, then suddenly out of the blue, so to speak, you can find yourself being whipped by filthy grit in a devastating sandstorm. Spending all these years of wind and sunshine on the desert, these are legendary poplar trees. Apparently, they lived for a thousand years, and they have remained standing another thousand years after their death. And for a third thousand years, they will not rot. Quite a while in Chinese history, the Kucha dancing and singing has been famous all over the country. It has been immortalized in poetry. Many a famous poet, including the most famous one, Li Bai, have sung their praise. The songs and dances might not be quite the same today. But the talents have passed on, along with a continuous quest for beauty. For a brief time, the desert is a great, great playground, and it's splendid. But think twice if you feel like moving in as a permanent resident. This is certainly not a very friendly environment, beautiful as it is. Now in his book, Wang Lobin says, I walk along the border of the desert year round, and my feeling is that the more harsh the environment is, the more imaginative the people are. Now coming to think of that, I think it's quite true. Look around. 
the endless desert without one drop of water. And think of the Uyghur people and their beautiful music. Wish I could get some inspiration here. I, oh. Lost kind of time. How many hours? We're still in the desert. Following a visit to the biggest desert in the country, we arrive at China's biggest freshwater lake, the Boztang Lake, less than an hour's drive outside Kuala City. The lake covers a total area of more than 1,000 square kilometers. Under a cloudy sky, it glows here in the desert. This is incredible. It's hard to imagine there's such huge amount of fresh water in the big, big Gobi Desert. And that one is called the Big Boston Lake. Naturally, it has a little brother, the Small Boston Lake. Reminds me of somewhere in southern China. Listen to the birds. The little brother bristles with reeds. A ride in a fast boat on a waterway like this with the Gobi Mountains looming is quite a cool experience. You have everything you need for a sandy seaside resort. The sunshine, the blue water, the golden beach. So don't forget to bring the bathing suit. One explanation for the source of this water is that it comes from the snow melt at the top of Tianshan Mountain. Yet it remains a mystery as to how such a amount of water accumulates amid the vast desert. From the Great Lake, we head further northwest to the legendary Baiyin Buluke grassland. Now I believe each land has its own character, and that character influenced the people living on it. This is Baiyin Buluke grassland, and here live the Mongolians. In this grassland, we need to listen to some Mongolian music. The land is boundless and lends you a sense of cutting free. Wang Longbin had never been here. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have had a great time here too. The Baiyin Buluke grassland is the biggest highland grassland in China. In Mongolian language, Baiyin Buluke means rich spring water. The green grassland amidst the snow-capped Tianshan Mountains is the home of the Mongolians. Many of them still lead a nomadic life and live in their traditional yurt. They offered me some milk tea, and we have everything here that Mongolians offer to their guests, like salad, yogur, some butter, and some bread. But the most precious thing they offer to you is their songs, and I'm going to ask her to sing a song for us. 嗯，您能帮我唱首歌吗？欢迎您，蒙古族的歌。嗯，欢迎您，唱一句我们蒙古歌啊，米粒的快乐是，米粒的快乐是，少年自己的亲人，就这样表扬唱的啊，歌给你
you need to pay tribute to the heaven, the earth, and yourself. The songs are soaring and uninhibited. Somehow, you get the feeling that only people living a carefree life on such boundless fertile land could express themselves in such an open way. This grassland is not exactly the kind that's knee deep in grass. That's because it's at such a high altitude. The grass won't grow tall here. Yet the local people are very proud of it. They say it's very nutritious. They'll tell you their cattle grow robust and strong on it. The treasured centerpiece of the Bayin Buluke is the Swan Lake, a huge area of swamp made up of many lakes. This is where more than 10,000 swans come to spend the summer before they migrate to the south. You know why the swan make this place their home? The local people told me proudly, that's because the swan only stay at the most beautiful place. I've spent many, many, many hours in a bus, in a car, in a jeep across the vast land of Xinjiang. Listened to many fantastic folk music, and have eaten a lot of sweet, sweet watermelon. And I imagine the journey of the lone music collector Wang Lobin over here in northern China years and years ago. He must have had different experience, but I believe we all had a great time. This is Travel Lock, and I'm Li Changying. Remember, we're here to unveil the beauty of China.